How's everybody doing today? Um, today we have Andrea Grossenball, and she's going to be presenting on a GIS analysis of stormwater facilities in Rockingham County. If you guys could give her your undivided attention and try to minimize leaving the room and um, making as little noise as possible, that would be appreciated. Thanks. Okay, so imagine, me, imagine this. It's raining outside and you didn't wear rain boots because you didn't check the Weather Channel app before you came. So your shoes are soaking wet, you see water pass you, and you look down at a storm drain. And have you ever actually wondered where that water goes? If you're like me, I actually did. I wondered where it went. For some of you, if you didn't actually wonder where it went and you just kind of moved on and walked to your car, that's okay. I'm going to tell you why storm water is important and why you should actually focus on it. So what is storm water? Well, as you can see, storm water is water that accumulates during a rain event or snow melt that eventually flows across impervious surfaces, such as sidewalks, roofs, and even roads that don't filtrate water into the soil or allow water to seep into the soil. As you can see, it flows directly into surface waterways and enters sewers, which eventually enters surface waters. So why is this a big deal? It's because it has many effects into the real world. So stormwater happens everywhere. It's a global issue. It doesn't just happen in Rockingham County or in Virginia, it's global. So some precursors are that there's a population increase and that there are climate change issues happening. With population increase comes more impervious surfaces because with more people you need more buildings. If not, well, we're gonna run into a problem. With climate change, there's bigger and more frequent storms that lead to more infrequent rain event, which then lead to more rain going to the storm sewer system, which then makes water go into surface waterways. It all kind of links together. As you can see, there's many different effects. The main effects are that it affects aquatic ecosystems. So the water that runs into the surface waterways picks up toxins and pollution that we don't really want in our water because this affects fishing. And we all like to fish, or some of us do. Uh, without stormwater controls, you wouldn't be able to fish, or you could, but you can't actually eat the fish, and that's probably not why you go fishing. It also increases flooding that leads to erosion. So any hillside, if you're living in an apartment on a hill, that could be affected by this erosion. Also habitat degradation, it leads to a habitat loss and so the biodiversity in our area actually gets reduced from the amount of stormwater that runs through. And lastly, the water quality, it highly decreases water quality with the increase of pollutants and excess nutrients that are in the water that are carried by impervious surfaces. So we actually have what's called stormwater management because in order to manage stormwater, you have to have controls. So the Virginia State Water Control Board makes regulations for reports and record keeping and also long-term maintenance of stormwater management. This allows stormwater management controls to be maintained and also for them to be recorded so that we know where they are in order to make sure that we reduce these pollutants and nutrients in stormwater before they enter these larger waterways in order for us to go fishing. See how it all links back together? So city view, why is this important? It's a weird kind of word. It looks like two words mushed together. That's okay. It's what Rockingham County uses as a database system for current, past, and projects going on currently with stormwater facilities actually happening today. So when a project goes on, say as like the new reserve apartments going on in Harrisonburg, we have to have stormwater controls in order for the excess pollutants and nutrients that are leaving the site to be controlled. So the city view would understand where that project is, what facility they are using, and also why it is important. As you can see here, I've talked a lot about stormwater controls, and best management practices, or what are known as BMPs here. But what really are they? We'll get that into that in a second. But they are used during, before, and after construction in order to, again, remove those pollutants and excess nutrients that we don't want in stormwater to lead into these larger bodies of water. And then also non-structural tools. We all sit through education classes and I'll go through this, but this is actually really important. I'm educating you now on what stormwater tools are and how they can affect our daily lives. That's what this education or non-structural tools are, and they are very important to learn about. So what actually are best management practices and why do we actually use them? So they're tools for mitigating the effects. Like I said, you use them for construction projects to remove all that excess nutrients and pollution, but it's also to make sure that we reduce the volume that leads to erosion, and then also we make sure that it infiltrates the soil so it can be uptaked by plants and other trees for them to grow but also filtration so that that water makes sure that it goes through a cycle naturally before it enters those larger bodies of water. So what does it actually focus on? Like I said, it focuses on that infiltration over runoff to make sure water actually goes into the soil. 
to help with habitats and other things that go through the soil, but also settling nutrients and retention ponds, and I'll explain what that is in just a second, but also removing these nutrients. I've been saying that a lot, but that's the main purpose of best management practices, to improve that water quality before it leads into larger bodies of water. So best management practices. There are four main ones used in Rockingham County, and I'm gonna explain what those are. So right here's a bioretention. As you can see, there's no standing pool of water, but they are these little trees. They're very small, that's okay. So what actually happens is the stormwater runs through this facility, and the nutrients are uptake by the plants in order for them to grow. So this reduces the amount of nutrients that flow through it and also increases water quality. The next one is retention ponds. As you can see, this has a standing pool of water. So once the stormwater runoff goes into it, it actually settles the nutrients at the bottom of the pool and allows it to sit there while the top water is better. So down here you see a proprietary filter. This is actually underground and it goes through and it actually allows it to cycle and infiltrate it naturally through this small filter here. And our last one here you can see is a basin. Much like a retention pond, it has a standing pool of water. But what is different about a basin is that water can actually go in, but it can also leave through inflow and outflow pipes. So that's what the main difference is between a retention pond and a basin. So now where does GIS and technology fit into this? So GIS, or a geographical information system, is a tool for spatial data. Essentially, all environmental data is spatial. It's about learning what one point <coughs> is, going to that point, and learning about all of the information with that one point. So that's what we plan to do for best management practices, is an interactive way to access this data for all the information on that one facility, but also to plan, identify, and develop new BMPs in Rockingham County where the land is more vulnerable to stormwater runoff. Also, like I said, it is used for environmental decision support systems, which are going through and looking at the environmental impacts of stormwater and placing a BMP where stormwater can be controlled. So I've done a lot of background, so I'm gonna finally get to my project. So what my project was is I had the pleasure of working with Rockingham County, and I created a GIS layer, or the Geographical Information Layer, for all the post-2012 facilities in Rockingham County that have a best management practice. As you can see here, I used a, a program called ArcGIS, and then I also went through and did a policy research. I wanted to incorporate what kind of policies are in place for best management practices and how we can better make our policy in order to better create the functionality of BMPs already in use in Rockingham County. As you can see, our stakeholders down here are the public works and community development departments that I had the pleasure of working with, but then also the landowners who actually have these facilities on their land. So how did I actually create this project and how did I start? So I began with a data collection. As you can see on your right is the Trimble tool used for data collection. It was about walking around, mapping all the facilities, and getting a ton of steps on my Fitbit. <laughs> data entry. I actually had to enter the data in the layer. It took a little bit longer of time, but the data had to go somewhere. Then three, I had to merge the data into a final geo database. So imagine the 50 different files on your computer, putting it into one file, that's what this merging is. And then finally, I did an analysis for, as I've been saying a bunch of times, the pollutant and re um, excess nutrients reduction. I did an analysis on that. And then I did a policy research like I had mentioned before. So GIS is actually a really powerful analytical tool. So I wanna walk through how I actually did this. So as you can see, this is a basin that I showed before. So when you walk to the site, this is what you'll see. So here's an aerial view of it. That giant brown pond full of excess nutrients and pollutants is what you'll see as an aerial view. So when we get to the site, we'll walk the channel, we'll map the inflow and outflow points, and then we will walk around the entire area of this facility. From there in GIS, you can actually see that it shows up as lines, points, and an area. All of this data is captured in attribute tables that I'll go over in just a quick bit. So as you can see, I circled this bottom point here that relates to a riser structure. So all of these different points have different data associated with them. And then the area that I have circled has data attached to it in this attribute table. You can see all of the information dealing with that one table. So data entry. So you pop up to a screen like this. You actually have to add the data. You find it in the raw file from one of your 50 files on your computer. And then you actually, it appears on your side over here under your table of contents. This shows you all the data in the layer currently. 
Then if you right click it, you get all of these different options such as zooming to the layer or pulling up that attribute table that I showed you that has all the data for that one point in it. So after all of this was done, after those five different steps, this is what it comes up to. To you it might seem just like a bunch of points, but I promise it's really important. So as you can see, there's points focused around Timberville, Broadway, Harrisonburg, and Elkton. So this is a cover map of Rockingham County. As you can see, the points that are covered in those four specific areas have a high population rate, as the areas in dark green and light green are normally used for agriculture, and those have different facilities for stormwater controls. As you can see, Harrisonburg is cut out. But when we fill it in with the Harrisonburg map, you can see that almost 90% of Harrisonburg is covered in impervious surfaces, which is why a majority of BMPs focus in the Harrisonburg area. So this map is kind of hard to see, but I'll zoom in. So I'm gonna circle here all the points that are on the map that deal with different facilities. And we're gonna focus on Rockingham Memorial Hospital. So in GIS, it pulls up like this. You see areas, you see points, and you see lines. This is a little more zoomed in and you can start to see those points, areas, and lines. These deal with the facility, their area, and any information dealing with it. So as you can see, this is an aerial view. As you can see, the area are not shaded in, that's what the basins or the facilities are. You can see points and different flows into the facilities. So when I overlay it in the map, you can see that the areas that we mapped map over the actual area for the facility. This makes sure that our map are intact and that all the information is correctly aligning to what basin and facilities that we are recording. So as I pop up three, these three different tables, these are these attribute tables that I've been talking about. It's all of the information that deals with this facility. All of the information for points, all of the information for lines, and for the area. These tables can include different information that I'll go over in just a second. So like I said, there are these different tables. So what actually information do they include? So as you can see, file name and number, that's more of an identifier for us in order to determine what facility it actually is. The FID number makes sure that we know what kind of facility and how many actual facilities there are in the area. So if there are three basins, the numbers 0, 1, and 2 will show up. For the shape, that's for the area, we address it as a polygon. For the type, that allows us to understand what type of facility is there, whether it's a basin, a filter, an other. Four bands whale, yes or no, that's pretty obvious. If there is one present, yes. If not, no. For inflows and outflows, there's a number identified with it that allows us to identify how many inflow pipes and outflow pipes there are for this facility. For the columns about plants, obviously that's pretty self-explanatory. If there are plants, a, a simple yes. Then we identify which kind of plants and how many. These are used for other aesthetics <coughs> purposes or purposes to hit the runoff first before going into the actual facility in order to remove those initial pollutants before settling in whatever type of facility is being used. For dates, those are the timestamps that we took the actual facility mapping. And then for comment, this is really where we can add any information that is important for this facility that we might wanna come back to and understand a little more about what is going on. And then shape area, that helped me do a more of an analysis to see how big the actual facility was. So based on this, I did a small analysis. So the summary data is that there are 100 total areas mapped in Rockingham County, split over 40 different locations, with 10 different types of BMP facilities in place. As you can see, the total BMP coverage in acres is 15.14, but compared to the total impervious surfaces amount in Rockingham County, which is 20,907.5, BMPs only cover 0.07% of the impervious surfaces. But this number is small, but it doesn't mean everything is correct. BMPs actually treat a much larger area than just the facility that they are in their area. So a basin could actually treat up to five or six acres more than just their area. So that small percentage could be bigger based on a larger analysis. So I did a nutrient removal analysis or efficiency rate for removal since that's the main purpose of BMPs. As you can see here, total suspended solids, I did analysis for the five ones that had information based on them. This study was produced by the EPA in order to see the functionality of different BMPs in counties and different areas. As you can see, basins are very efficient at removing total suspended solids, removing up to 98%. While as you can see, dry ponds are not as effective because there are only two in the county, you can see that they're not used as much. The last column in the 
chart you see is Rockingham County combined. These are all the different facilities combined and how much they actually remove before entering the larger bodies of water. As you can see for total suspended solids, they reduce over 90% of the nutrients and pollutants that run through these facilities in Rockingham County. The next one I did was a total phosphorus. As you can see, basins are still the most effective, which is why there are 49 of them in the county. They reduce over 80% of total phosphorus flowing through their facilities. While as you can see, dry ponds did a little bit better where wet ponds were actually the least efficient. So for Rockingham total combined, they, you can see they re remove over 60% of total phosphorus flowing through the county. These nutrients play into effect to deal with habitat degradation that we had talked about before that reduces the actual ecosystems because of these toxins and pollutions. So the last one I did was a total nitrogen. As you can see, basins are still the most effective with bioretentions coming up a close second. So they remove over 67% while dry ponds and wet ponds are the least effective. So in Rockingham County, the BMP facilities actually are not as efficient for removing total nitrogen because they only actually remove about 37%. But don't be alarmed, this number is still better than the areas untreated. If there's an area untreated by basins, then all of the nutrients flowing from stormwater are going into these larger bodies of water. So observations and findings. As I was going through my data collection and walking around, I noticed a few things. We would come up with to a facility like this that was unmaintained or unclean. This reduces their functionality to remove nutrients and pollutions. If they're not properly maintained, then they're not doing their best or peak to remove these nutrients and pollutions before entering the larger bodies of water. What I also found is that if we have better policy in place, that these facilities can be more functional and actually remove their total number amount. The study done by the EPA was based on functional and properly working best management practices. But if our practices are not maintained or clean, they're actually reducing a smaller amount of pollution and nutrients. So looking ahead to that policy research that I had talked about, mostly it, it comes down to three things, required monitoring, fines, and maintenance. These three things uh, come for an accountability. They allow people to actually understand that keeping their BMPs clean and functioning properly reduce the amount of pollutants and nutrients leaving their site. If we had these different things in place, they would make sure that they are functioning properly and understanding how they actually work. So the last point is MS4 permits, which is Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Permits. Currently, Rockingham County does not obtain these permits because of the census, they are not considered an urbanized area. Until these permits are, in, uh, until they are in effect of Rockingham County, they can't really have fines or those implementation processes like required monitoring maintenance in place quite yet. When they obtain those permits, it'll make sure that facilities are functioning properly and can reduce the most that they can before entering those larger bodies of water. So I would like to thank a few people for helping make this project possible. Dr. Brent, my capstone advisor, for believing in me that I could do this project in a year from switching my projects. Um, and then Lisa Perry, who is actually here today from the Community Development Department down at the county. And then also Helen White, who helped me map and data collect all of these points for Rockingham County. I'd also like to thank Patrick Wade, who helped me understand what GIS is and actually understand how to enter the data before I played around with it. And then also my friends and family for listening to me talk about stormwater and coming up with my cheesy jokes for the past year and a half. And with that, I would like to thank you for coming to my presentation today. And if you have any questions, I am open to them. Um, does the number of BMP uh, management methods, uh, well, because I noticed um, on that slide where you had uh, like dry ponds and wet ponds, does the number of those implementation um, devices actually influence their the results of their outputs? Because I noticed like for the wet ponds and the dry ponds, their numbers were lower, but there were also fewer of them. Whereas um, like bioretention had uh, a larger number. Um, being used in the county. So the study done by the EPA, those were actually just for wet ponds and dry ponds, so that actually didn't have the number for like two or 49 basins in the county. So those numbers were associated with the actual ones in Rockingham County. So the number of facilities actually didn't play into the amount of nutrients they removed. Yes. 
that basin that serves Rockingham Hospital, does it just serve that area or is it capable of serving more areas? So the area treated for the entire basin can flow from areas, like I said, five or six acres out, but that specific facility is for Rockingham County or for the Memorial Hospital. Because there are other over 40 different facilities, they service different areas and construction projects. But the map that I showed does not include projects prior to 2012. So there could be other basins and other areas closer that are not currently mapped since my layer was just for post-2012 BMPs. Okay. Yes? You mentioned the challenge of maintaining these BMPs, and in some cases you found some that weren't maintained. Correct. Do you know whether Rockingham County is coming up with a plan to do ongoing maintenance on these structures, or how, how, who is responsible for maintaining them? So currently we have inspections for erosion and sediment control, and they pop up in that city view, which is that database for an annual inspection. So we'll actually go out and inspect them and then write comments for them. As of right now, there's not really a follow-up except for it is maintained and recorded in that database. And then when the next time it pops up to see if they have done anything, we go back out to the site and record what we have found. Um, but I currently do not know of any um, practices that they have going on right now unless they have recently changed it to maintain those facilities for either reaching out or making them. So, so it sounds like, for example, the hospital would, mm -hmm. would be responsible for maintaining the structures that are on their property. Correct. Right? Because they're not county owned, they are responsible for their own facilities on their property. Do you know, a follow up, do you know if the hospital is using any bioretention? Yes, basis. in that table they actually are. There are just multiple ones. I actually have the data if you would like to see it. Um, but they are using a combination of basins, bioretentions, and they actually have a few wetlands that we did not actually map. I'm familiar with those wetlands. When they were building the hospital, we were consulted on. That's the headwaters of Pleasant Run. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming.